Hello, I'm Dr. Robin Gansert and welcome to American Humane in Action. As an animal lover, you may already know that American Humane is this country's very first national humane organization and has been fighting for the humane treatment of all animals since way back in 1877. Today, we are proud to say that we save, shelter, feed, and protect more than one billion animals around the world. Those in our homes, those who are caught in war, natural disasters and cruelty cases, the animal actors we so love in movies and television, endangered species in zoos and aquariums, and hundreds of millions of animals living on farms and ranches. At American Humane, our mission is to help animals whenever and wherever they are in need. Why? Because we love them. And I know you do too. Since the year 1500, over 680 species have gone extinct. Some are well known, many are not. But in our interconnected global ecosystem, every species matters. From fires consuming the planet to plastic choking our oceans, the signs are everywhere and scientists are sounding the alarm. A new mass extinction is upon us. On this episode of American Humane in Action, we dive into our global conservation program that certifies crucial allies fighting to protect the Earth's magnificent animals, American Humane certified zoos and aquariums. Rob Yorty is a zoological director for SeaWorld Global Theme Park Development. He has more than 30 years experience working with zoos and aquariums and for the past decade has helped administer the SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund grants. I had the chance to catch up with Rob earlier. Hello Rob, welcome to American Humane in Action. Robin, thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here and talk to you and all the folks at American Humane. Rob, can you share with us how you first became interested in the zoological field and how you got to where you are today? So this is a very fun story for me because I was one of those little kids that knew what he was gonna do at a very young age and has been able to still do it. Uh, my parents moved from a little town in Wisconsin to the coast of Southern California to raise their, their children. I was lucky enough to be adopted in Long Beach, California and joined the family. Uh, I have a little brother named Dave as well. And we were given the opportunity to be on the coast of California at the beaches on Catalina Island up in Joshua Tree National Monument uh, and all over Southern California in the uh, in nature all the time. Our parents had us out all the time and it just gave me a natural affinity for wanting to, to work with animals and be around them. It's something that's driven me since I'm a little kid and I've told people this for many years that 99% of the people in this world have gone to a zoo or an oceanarium and decided that's what they want to do in their career. Most of those people have grown up. 1% of us did not grow up, and I'm still doing what I wanted to do when I was a little kid. So now you're executive director of the SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund. What does this entail, and what are some of the major conservation projects SeaWorld is supporting? The Conservation Fund for SeaWorld and Bush Gardens is really one of the cores of what we do. We started in 2003 as a nonprofit arm for the company, which allowed our guests to come help us do our conservation work around the world. Our guests would always come back and say, how can we be a part of this? Uh, it's one of the things that I am so proud of. It's actually one of my, my additional jobs to my main job at SeaWorld as zoological director, but it gives me a chance to go interact with people around the world and influence conservation. I spend a lot of time in South Africa with the Mantis Collection and Wilderness Foundation Africa, working on rhino anti-poaching programs and being out in the field with rhinos, which is one of the most incredible animals. Uh, also spend uh, time in Brazil working on research projects on giant armadillos, uh, doing sloth and jaguar rescue in Panama. Uh, we fund projects in Asia for elephant and tiger work. Uh, and it really is one of the, the core pieces to what SeaWorld and Bush Gardens and Discovery Cove is, is that conservation message. And we want to be able to share that with our guests and have them join us with the journey that we're on. What is one of the conservation projects you are most passionate about? Wow, that's a tough one for me to pick one. We have so many just amazing projects and many that I spend a lot of time out in the field on. I am going to talk about one I brought it up initially is working with the Mantis Foundation and Wilderness Foundation Africa in South Africa on anti-poaching programs for white and black rhino. 
This is a, a region of, in South Africa, right along the Eastern Cape. It's really getting in to understand what the region needs, being able to communicate with the, the, the people there and the people out in the field on why we should protect these animals and why it's so important. And the fact that what's happening to these rhinos is tragic. People are cutting off their horns, shooting them and cutting off their horns just for traditional medicine. Uh, and it's really just like your fingernails. It's keratin. It doesn't have any medicinal purposes, but it really is educating people because we know the core of conservation, if we're going to make conservation actually work, we've got to educate the people in those regions and show them how important their natural wildlife is. Can you tell us more about the SeaWorld and Bush Gardens Conservation Fund and its goals in the coming years? Our goals for this year are to continue one of our really biggest projects, which is trying to figure out alternative fishing methods that will not affect North Atlantic right whales off the, the Eastern coast of the US. Also, we're gonna to continue to support a lot of our long-term projects, whether it's a sloth rescue facility in Panama, anti-poaching for rhinos uh, and lions and giraffes in Africa, um, or studying penguins in Antarctica, but we're really looking at our long-term core projects and also projects in the U.S., whether we're reclaiming uh, wetlands here in Florida, understanding dolphin populations along the coast, or rescuing seabirds or other marine animals on all the coasts, all three sets of the coasts in the U.S. But it really is the core of what we do, and it's something that I'm so very proud of. What is your favorite aspect of working with animals? My favorite aspect of working with animals is change. On a daily basis, no matter what we're working with, they are teaching us something new. They're, we have to make sure that their habitats are dynamic, that their lives are dynamic. So whether it's the team that works with killer whales, the teams that works with our sharks, the teams that work with our penguins, uh, in, the, in the SeaWorld, Bush Gardens and Discovery Cove Parks, we are always learning. We are actually the students to the animals. The animals are the teachers to us. If I take that one step farther and go out into the wild and do the field projects, it is the same thing. It's change on a daily basis and it's excitement and it's new things to learn. I don't ever think I'm gonna get a chance to learn as much as I truly want to about all the animals I get a chance to work with. SeaWorld's American Humane Certified and we are so grateful for the impact you make for animals, specifically for research, education and conservation. What does it mean to you to be American Humane Certified? So Robin, I'll say this is one of the, the greatest things that I think we have to, to share in our parks. The program that you and Brad Andrews have put together for zoos and aquariums is so important because it not only lets our guests know, but it reinforces to us that we are at the top echelon of animal welfare. That is something that is so core to all of us in the zoological teams, whether it's the teams working marine mammals or birds, or aquarists, and even our educators to get a chance to talk about what we're doing. But animal welfare has always been the core for SeaWorld. And it's just something that, it, this is one that shows that we are truly at the top of our game. And we work very, very hard to make sure that we stay there. For people watching at home, how can they help with conservation? Robin, this is one of the most important questions that I think we get in our parks on a daily basis. When our guests come to the SeaWorld, Bush Gardens and Discovery Cove parks, when they leave, they wanna know what they can do. And I think the biggest message I can give to them is make sure you're informed, make sure you're going to visit good zoos and aquariums and you're talking to the trainers and the keepers and the aquarists and the educators to learn as much as you can and then go back to their communities and either become involved in some community programs continue to learn by good programming and then also if they can make good sustainable choices when it comes to their travel if they're going to another country and they're going to take an animal experience make sure it's the right one make sure it's responsible make sure they take care of the animals well and their animal welfare is good because if we have our guests that come to us go out and and talk about animal welfare and expect a high level of animal welfare then the conservation world and the animal world benefits all the way around. Thank you for spending time with us today, Rob. You are one of our humane heroes. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Marcus Scribner. The way we treat others affects us all, and that includes the way we treat animals. Cruel treatment of animals overseas led to the pandemic crisis, killing a million people worldwide. Environmental destruction, 
pollution and poaching have killed endangered wild species. Our world today is a poor place for people to live and inhumane for both people and animals. To fight back, American Humane created a 10-point plan to help animals, people, and the world we share. From ending the dog and cat meat trade to universal humane standards for farms, zoos, entertainment, and animal transport. Together, we can make a difference. Join the fight for our animal friends. Go to AmericanHumane.org today and sign our new deal for animals. For a kinder, safer, and healthier world for all of us. Hi, I'm Carson Kressley. Of all the most valuable resources in the world, kindness is the most precious. For more than 140 years, American Humane has been working to make the world a kinder place for animals. Rescuing those caught in disasters, protecting animals on our farms, on the silver screen, and the world's remarkable and endangered species who need our care to help them survive. All of us can make a difference by making humane choices at the supermarket, in our choice of entertainment, and by supporting conservation and rescue efforts. It's not hard at all. Make being kind a lifestyle choice and visit AmericanHumane.org for simple ways you can help build a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for animals and for all of us. Thanks for watching American Humane in Action. There are so many wonderful examples of conservation work being done at zoos and aquariums around the country. But how can you know when you visit a zoo or aquarium that the animals in its care are being treated as they should be? Well, you look for the American Humane Certified Seal of Approval. One of the newest American Humane Certified facilities is the Florida Aquarium, which demonstrates exceptional welfare and treatment to the animals in its care. I sit down with CEO Roger German to discuss the American Humane Certification and some of the inspirational conservation work being done at the aquarium. Roger, thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Robin. I'm so glad to have you here and to learn more about your incredible work at the Florida Aquarium. But before we get started, Roger, please tell our incredible viewers more about you and your background. Oh, it's interesting. So I have this really unique, diverse background, which mm -hmm. I love being the president and CEO of the Florida Aquarium mm -hmm. and have been in the zoological community for the past 22 years. However, Prior to that, I actually started off in journalism and my very first show uh, was working in television uh, at the ABC affiliate in Chicago. Then I went into politics and oh, wow. government in Chicago. So I always like to say that, how did he get me to Shedd Aquarium in Chicago and eventually here the Florida Aquarium? The sharks don't bite as bad at the Florida Aquarium as they did in City Hall, which is why <laughs> I, am, uh, I am just honored to be serving as the President and CEO of the Florida Aquarium. I love your background and I love your shark. Uh, analogy there, especially now. I'm sure you're much happier at the Florida Aquarium with all the animals you get to serve. Your background is exquisite, uh, and you're a true fighter for animals, too, which I love. And yeah. you're a true fighter for conservation. Can you share with us some of your key conservation initiatives at the Florida Aquarium? Yeah, well, thank you. You know, it's, it started off at an early age, though. It started mm -hmm. off at an early age in being able to see animals, you know, mm -hmm. in human care. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, later on in life, just try to follow that passion. But when I really understood what organizations like the Florida Aquarium, their mm -hmm. purpose and mm -hmm. what we do every day, mm -hmm. um, it really, really connected with me and inspired me. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you know, you have dedicated really the last 22 years of my life to save animals, to save wildlife from extinction, to make sure that the animals that we have these bonds with, that you, you know, and American Humane so like just nurture and foster yes. and protect and preserve, yes. we need to do that. So our role at the Florida Aquarium is to, again, protect wildlife from extinction, to do our part to make this world not only a better place uh, for ourselves, but, but animals. And uh, I know it's exciting. It's exciting to be there. I've been there uh, a little over five years at the CEO role, uh, but have, again, have been in the industry for 22 years, really dedicating my life to saving wildlife and wild places. Wow, so inspirational. I know so many people watching the show today want to be you out there in the field doing this incredible work and then certainly at the Florida Aquarium. I have to ask you a question. You mentioned a hot button term, inhuman care. Tell me, 
Is it okay to have an animal in human care? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, absolutely. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we wouldn't be here if we didn't believe that. I 100 percent agree. Mm -hmm. Look, I, I use my own uh, background as an example, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm a blue collar kid from the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. First, you know, uh, child in my dad's side to go to college. Went into, went into a totally different profession, but what really brought me together mm -hmm. uh, here at, uh, you know, to get into this field? And it goes back to my, my early days when I had exposure. Growing up on the south side of Chicago, again, blue collar neighborhood, I would not have exposure to many of these animals mm -hmm. to care about them. Mm -hmm. And so I believe as long as we can do uh, our part as an industry and as an organization to provide the best animal welfare, and the best care for our animals that we should have them in human care because they are really those ambassadors that are saving wildlife and again it's it's important for us to be certified by world-class organizations like yourself that talk about why we do what we do and give us the permission and the value to do what we do because our ultimate goal again is reliant on our ability to care for these animals uh, you're so passionate. You're a passionate advocate for animals and a passionate advocate for zoos and aquariums, which is really important. Let's talk about being American Humane Certified because you were one of our early leaders and innovators in this effort. Tell me, what does it mean to you to be American Humane Certified at the Florida Aquarium? Well, it's, it's two things. So I think there's two audiences that we look at to be American Humane Certified. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, let's go to the internal uh, mm -hmm. side of it. And you, you've been on the front lines. You know what it's like. Yeah. I mean, we don't get paid a lot of money. We dedicate our lives. I mean, we have sleeping bags under our, you know, our desks, many of our staffers. We miss birthday parties, all of those things mm -hmm. because we care about animals and we care. Yeah. So to have American Humane come in and certify us to say there is no better organization that cares for its animals. And when you miss a birthday party and we know we care for our animals, it means something to our staff. So first and foremost, the, 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 uh, I get goosebumps thinking about just our staff and the reaction when we announced that we were officially certified. I mean, it was a huge audible applause because all the work that we do every day, the sacrifices that our staff makes yes. was not in vain. It actually was validated. So thank you for there. Now let's go to the public side of that. Yes. I think in this day and age, people are looking for, you know, make sure that they are going to the best of the best. That if we are going to, to your earlier question, make sure that we care for animals, we do it in the best. So to be able to go to our audiences, to go to our donors, you know, to go to government officials and say that we are one of the best, that we are American Humane Certified. There is no questions about how we care for our animals and the way that we're able to deliver those. That's a huge, you know, just value proposition that I think has helped the Florida Aquarium, you know, grow our conservation conservation programs, grow our attendance, mm -hmm. you know, grow our revenue because people believe that we are the best of the best and, and the certification just validates that, which is awesome. And you certainly are. I want to go back to this point about being validated. You're being validated based on solid science. So I know your animal welfare uh, employees, your staff had to really appreciate being validated that they're doing things to the latest science and evidence-based practices. What does that mean to you, knowing that science backs being certified as being humane? Absolutely. No, that, that, that I think, is, the, that, that I think is, is really the bump for our staff especially. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that in our industry, with our passion and dedication of mm -hmm. all of our staff, they make it look easy. But yes. we know it's not easy. Never is. Yes. It's your passion, my passion as well, saving not just an individual animal, but an entire species from extinction. What are some of your key conservation efforts at the Florida Aquarium to save an entire species? Yeah, so, you know, I got here about five years ago, and what our evolution has been is to become a conservation-based aquarium. So conservation drives our business. So yes. I bring that up because that allows us to go do the work that, that we're referring to. So, um, you know, there's, there's a couple of pillars that we focus on. One is coral. So we are probably one of the preeminent leaders in coral restoration, especially when it comes to the Florida Coral Reef Track. I like to say that that's North America's great barrier reef, it's, mm -hmm. and it's often overlooked. So coral is a big program. We, we, we invest mm -hmm. in science research. Sea turtles is another one. Oh. Penguins, sharks. Uh, and then the newest one that, that we're looking at, and we'll be in this game very quickly, is manatees. And I'll say that only because organizations like ours, American Humane Certified Organizations who care for the animals and when we can step up for manatees in this particular case which is a huge problem right here in the state of Florida yes. um, if we can't step up when they're in trouble then why do we exist so um, that's an emerging conservation um, species that we will protect uh, it's, a, it's a busy agenda 
huge agenda with a crisis of time. Time's not on your side. Roger, if there's other institutions going through this process to consider being American Humane certified, what would you tell them? Well, first and foremost is them, absolutely. Um, I know it's, it, it can be daunting to think about because yes. mm -hmm. as, we, as we know, it's a very rigorous process. Mm -hmm. It is based on science, right? Mm -hmm. It is based on, you know, facts and, 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 and just, it, it, it's the gold standard. If it, it, Diamond, platinum, you know, I'm not mm -hmm. very good at those, but like mm -hmm. it's the highest standard you can have for mm -hmm. animal welfare. Yes. Secondly is, I do believe as we move forward and the question of animals and human care comes up, mm -hmm. as a CEO, I wanna look at every person who visits, who pays a ticket, mm -hmm. a donor, a government official and say, we are American Humane Certified. And what happens there is they go, okay, and they move on and they enjoy their day. They never once worry about how we care for our animals. Mm -hmm. And then the learning happens, right? The, the, the enlightenment, the knowledge. But if they're walking through wondering, so I don't know how you can't get American Humane Certified or why you wouldn't want to do it, even when it seems like, oh, it's very rigorous. Um, it's, it's, it's what needs to happen for organizations to be world-class and deliver on their mission every day. Thank you, I, I believe that as well. Roger, thanks so much for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. I loved our conversation and where we're going together to save animals and protect them. Well, you're one of our humane heroes and we're grateful for you. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be right back with more American Humane in Action. Animals make our world better, so American Humane says, adopt from a local rescue or shelter, become a rescue volunteer, choose humane foods, and support certified wildlife centers. Visit AmericanHumane.org to learn more. Hi, I'm Arielle Winter. If you're anything like me, your pets are not only your best friends, they're part of your family. American Humane, which has been rescuing animals like Cleo here for more than 100 years, has life-saving tips that can make a big difference before, during, and after disasters such as hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, or wildfires. So when disaster strikes, you want to be prepared to protect them. Be sure to microchip or tag your pets. Never leave them behind in a major crisis, and be sure to have an emergency kit ready in your home at all times with a pet crate or carrier, leash, blanket, ID, and medications, their water bowl, and seven to 10 days worth of food. To find out how to protect your entire family during a disaster and help our best friends in their worst times, please visit AmericanHumane.org. One million species may be at risk of extinction, but there is hope as passionate professionals at leading zoological organizations across the globe dedicate their lives to protecting animals. To award those who achieve significant positive change in the field of conservation practice, theory, and research, American Humane launched the Wolfgang Kiesling International Prize for Species Conservation. This annual award was created in honor of Wolfgang Kiesling, renowned conservationist and the founder of Laura Parque. Located on the island of Tenerife in Spain's Canary Islands, Laura Parque is one of the most well-respected zoological institutions in the world, and in 2017 became the first zoo in Europe to receive the American Humane Certification. The winner of this year's coveted Kiesling Prize is Dr. John Paul Rodriguez. I was thrilled to have a chance to catch up with him to learn more about his award-winning conservation efforts. Hi, John Paul, and congratulations on being named this year's Kiesling Prize winner. Thank you so much. It's a huge honor to be able to be here with you. Can you tell us about the conservation programs you are involved with? Yeah, I'm involved in, in three different things. At the global level, I work with our UCN Species Survival Commission, uh, chairing a network of 10,500 species experts all over the world. So lots of projects go on at that level. In the second place, I am the, the president and founder of Provita, a conservation organization in Venezuela. And uh, that's a hands-on project that I'm involved with. For example, the yellow-shouldered parrot, a species that is in the Venezuelan Caribbean. When we started working on them 600, uh, uh, 30 years ago, sorry, there were 650 parrots in the wild, another 2,000, thanks to a concerted effort of many, many people working on protecting nests and releasing parrots into the wild. And my third job as a professor of ecology 
in, in the Venezuelan Institute for Scientific Investigation, where I, I build teams of people who make these projects possible and take them forward. That's so incredibly interesting. What is your prediction of what we'll see in the coming years if we don't make significant efforts to protect endangered species? Good question. You know, I, I like to think of it slightly differently. So I saw a, a scientist once give a lecture and he said, sure, there will be life a hundred years from now on Earth, no matter what we do, but will that be the Earth you want to li live in? And for me, that's really the key question, because do we want to be on an Earth, in a planet without coral reefs, without mangrove forest, without rainforest, without grasslands, without elephants, without whales. Is that the, kind, the, the place we want to be in? If that's the place we want to be in, then we're exactly on the right track. But if we want to be in a place where nature thrives, then we have to change our ways. Wow, that's sobering. But I know we can make a difference working together. What can the average person do to support species conservation? We always have to keep in mind that all that we do is connected to nature. So the air that we breathe, the water that we drink, the food that we eat, the materials that make the cars and the buildings that we use all come from nature. So uh, make, realizing that connection and making sure you, your decisions as a consumer consider uh, where food that you eat comes from, et cetera, all these different things already helps you reduce your impact on nature. But also you can do things locally in your own, in your own home, in your own cities uh, by visiting zoos, aquariums, and botanical gardens uh, nearby. These are institutions, especially those that are accredited, uh, that have an impact on the conservation of species in the wild. Often, some of the resources they collect from your, from your ticket go directly into the field and support uh, species conservation. But you also learn about, about animals, plants, fungi, and ecosystems that you wouldn't otherwise have any exposure to by living in a city. So it's a great way to learn and to impact nature in the wild. Thank you for your insight and congratulations on being named the recipient of this year's Keesling Prize. Thank you for all you do, John Paul. Thank you, my pleasure. If you were inspired by this show, join us and the Compassion Movement by supporting American Humane and its work to save, shelter, feed and protect more than one billion animals every year. And please visit AmericanHumane.org and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel so we can keep you up to date on all the latest news about the beautiful animals who share our world. I'm Dr. Robin Ganser. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll tune in to all of our episodes of American Humane in Action for an inside look at the innovative efforts that are building a better, more humane world for all of us.